Landlords and real estate investors across America are in panic mode in early 2022. That's because the data that I'm about to show you in this video reveals that we are about to see a massive wave of lease defaults and evictions unlike anything the US has seen before in its history. This eviction wave is going to assuredly crash both the US rental market and the US housing market, specifically in certain cities where this eviction wave has already started. And the first place that you need to get started in terms of understanding just how bad this eviction wave is gonna be is by understanding the current housing crisis we're in. You can see on this graph, we're tracking the year over year percentage increase in rental rate in America. The long-term average is about a 3.6% increase per year, roughly tracking how much wages go up. But what's happened over the last year, folks? Check this. A mass massive 16% increase in rents. The rent that you are paying to your landlord on average has gone up from 1,600 a month to 1,850 a month in just one year. Not surprisingly, Americans cannot afford these dramatic increases in rents and that's why we're seeing a record surge in the number of renters who aren't paying their rent. Data from the National Multifamily Housing Council, a survey of over 11 million renter housing units found that in December, 2021, 8% did not pay. That is almost double the level it was two years ago prior to the pandemic. Now, I think a lot of you are already catching on to how we're about to see a big eviction wave. Number one, rents across America are up by a record amount over 15%, roughly three times more than how much wages have gone up. That means renters can't afford it. As a result, we're seeing a record surge in the number of renters who aren't paying rent. The next logical step is that we're gonna see a massive wave of evictions. And in a second, I'm gonna tell you just how many evictions we're gonna see in 2022 in the cities where we're gonna see the most. But to understand just how damaging this wave of evictions is gonna to be to the US housing market and the US renter population, we need to zoom back about 18 months so you can see how we got to this situation. The US government has implemented three policies during the pandemic that have directly contributed to this rental housing crisis and is the main reason why your rent is so high right now. Starting with number one, on September 4th, 2020, the CDC issued an eviction moratorium banning landlords from evicting tenants during the coronavirus pandemic. In March 2021, U.S. Congress passed a third stimulus check, a $1,400 check that was directly deposited into the bank accounts of Americans. As we now know, many Americans use that stimulus check to pay rent. And then in the middle of 2021, the U.S. government distributed almost $50 billion in rental relief funds to states across America to go to tenants and landlords who were negatively impacted by lack of rent payment during the coronavirus pandemic. Now, the thing to understand about these three government policies, while they might be well-intentioned and have helped certain people, is that they've had a nasty side effect, a nasty secondary consequence that's a primary driver to why we're in a housing crisis in early 2022, and it's this. These three government policies, the eviction moratorium, the stimulus checks, and the rental assistance program have artificially stimulated real estate demand across America and put taxpayer dollars directly into landlords' pockets. Normally when someone doesn't pay rent, they then have to leave their apartment. Maybe they get evicted or maybe they just move in with friends or family and that unit becomes vacant and they can be rented out to someone else. However, that basically hasn't happened over the last 18 months. You can see that very clearly on this graph where we're looking at the percentage decline in evictions that's occurred across America since the pandemic started. You can see that we're basically at a baseline level in February 2020, March 2020, and then wow, evictions declined by 90% as the pandemic hit, and then basically stayed in a minus 40 to 60% range. Then in August 2021, the Supreme Court shot down the CDC eviction moratorium, and since then we've started to see an increase in evictions. However, they are still 36% below pre-pandemic levels in February 2022. Now, interestingly, a lot of people are celebrating the fact that evictions are still very low. They're clapping their hands and saying it's great that evictions are 35 
5% below pre-pandemic levels. But it's this lack of evictions that's directly contributing to the housing crisis we're seeing right now. And in a second, I'm gonna show you the cities where the situation is most dire and the cities where we're already seeing the inevitable deluge of evictions that are piling up. But first, you need to understand just how messed up this situation is and how this lack of evictions is actually creating more problems in the US housing market. Remember that the percentage of tenants not paying rent is now at an all-time high, according to data from the National Multifamily Housing Council. Meanwhile, eviction filings are still 40% below what they were pre-pandemic. That is a sign of a dysfunctional rental housing market. It suggests that landlords are keeping certain tenants who aren't paying rent and electing not to evict them, maybe because they're receiving rent relief. But at the same time, because rent has gone up by so much, remember 16% year over year nationally, 25% in a place like Vegas or Austin, because rent has gone up so much, we're now creating a whole new swath of renters who can't pay rent and are facing eviction. This is like whack-a-mole. We were trying to whack one problem with the eviction moratorium, the stimulus checks, and the rental assistance funds, but then we created a whole other problem with rent inevitably going up so much as a result, the artificial increase in real estate demand has simply created another section of renters who is now exposed, can't afford rent, and is going to face eviction. This is sadly what happens when the US government meddles too much in the inner workings of a specific market. The US housing stock is not equipped to handle a situation where landlords can't evict. That's just the situation based on the structural supply of housing we have in America. You might not like that, but that's the reality of the situation. And if you want to basically change the rules on eviction and ensure that every American, even if they don't pay the rent, can stay in their unit, well, then you're gonna cause 16% rent growth year over year. Now, I think a lot of you at this point in the video are starting to say to yourself, okay, I get it. I get how we ended up in this rental housing crisis based off the government intervention in the rental housing market and then landlords opportunistically increasing rent. However, I think a lot of you are noticing that this is not sustainable. Once the government eviction moratoriums go away, which they have federally, they're still around in certain cities and states, but probably not for much longer. Once the moratoriums go away, and once all the rental assistance goes away, you are now left with a housing market and a rental market that's nearly 20% more expensive with no government support to back it up. That's when you get a crash. That's when you get a deluge of millions and millions of evictions like we're gonna see in 2022. I believe we could see four million evictions over the next 12 months in America, which would be about 70% more than in a normal year prior to the pandemic. And this, of course, is gonna come at a huge cost to both renters and landlords. Many renters who have been living beyond their means the last two years, renting apartments that maybe they shouldn't, given their current economic situation and government assistance, are now gonna to need to move in with friends or family, are gonna now be evicted. Meanwhile, these landlords are gonna have a deluge of vacant units that they're going to struggle to fill, and we're gonna see rents across America collapse in 2022. This is going to facilitate a housing crash because many real estate investors are going to fire sale their houses when this occurs. Nearly 18 million single family homes across America are owned by real estate investors and there's another 20 to 30 million multifamily apartment units owned by real estate investors. We're going to see many of those dumped onto the market during this rental crash. Now I think some of you are wondering where is this going to happen first? Using eviction filing data from Eviction Lab we can get a clue because we are already starting to see big increases in evictions in certain parts of the country. Even though we're not seeing it yet across America as a whole, certain cities and certain states are seeing big increases in evictions because basically the rent is too high, the government money has ran out, and we're seeing the inevitable consequence. In a city like Houston, we are now 16% above the pre-pandemic level in eviction filings, according to data from Eviction Lab. And remember, this is a filing for an eviction. This is not a processing, so the actual eviction will take place later after the filing. And you can see that there's been a big surge in just the last month or so in Houston. As is also the case in Fort Worth, you can see we went from being about 35% below normal on evictions to now 13% above in Fort Worth. And we're actually about 30% above normal in a place like Las Vegas, whose economy was hit particularly hard by the COVID pandemic. Well, now we're starting to see tenants get evicted en masse in Las Vegas. And so Houston, Fort Worth, Las Vegas, 
Vegas, along with cities like Columbus and Milwaukee, are some of the ones where evictions are now back above their pre-pandemic levels. Meanwhile, cities like Dallas and Austin, Texas are still below pre-pandemic norms, but are rapidly escalating in their number of eviction filings. These are likely the places where we're gonna see the first consequence of this rental housing crash play out. We're gonna see a lot more vacant units show up on the market in these cities where the evictions are already hitting. Now folks, there's actually one additional thing that you also need to consider in terms of this impending rental market crash. And that's the fact that the number of apartment buildings under construction right now is at an all-time high level. We have never seen so many apartment buildings, over 700,000 units actively under construction. And the apartment software company RealPage predicts that in 2022, we're going to see about 425,000 of these units delivered into the market in 2022, which is gonna be a record number and about 17% higher than the 2021 deliveries. This means that landlords are gonna face a double whammy in 2022. Not only are eviction rates gonna surge, they're gonna to have to contend with a massive deluge of new apartment supply, which is going to result in a big decline in rents. In fact, we're already seeing rent growth slow considerably. You can see this data from Zillow shows that month over month rent growth in January was only plus 0.1% back down to normal level. So it seems like the worst of it is over in terms of the rent increases. And don't be surprised if this rent growth heads into negative territory for the rest of the year. Now, I think there's about three main takeaways that I have from making this video, and I think many of you will have. Number one is that US government policy, while well-intentioned, many of these pandemic programs were well-intentioned, often have unintended negative side effects. While the eviction moratoriums and the government rent relief did benefit people who were adversely impacted during the pandemic, it also negatively impacted a whole new group of people whose rent went up by 10, 15, 20% because of the constriction in housing supply and the artificial stimulation of rental demand that occurred because of these government policies. Many of these people will now be facing eviction in 2022. My second takeaway is that the supposedly robust housing market and robust rental market is not fundamentally strong at all. It's merely propped up by billions and billions of dollars of government payments into the market. I mean, really think about it, folks. Landlords are getting taxpayer money into their bank accounts right now. How do you feel about that? And that is having a direct consequence of increasing rent. It's not a good situation. But my third takeaway is that there's nothing sustainable about this and that as the government money rolls off and as the moratoriums go away, we are gonna see a wave and a deluge of evictions because with rent up 20% year over year in certain markets and wages up 5%, it's an inevitability. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoyed the data. If so, make sure to smash that like button and also make sure to comment below. I wanna hear your thoughts about this. Were you someone facing eviction who benefited from these government programs? Were you someone alternatively who paid your rent but had to take a 25% increase in rent? Let me know in the comments below. I'd also love to hear from you if you're a landlord. Uh, when you guys comment, it makes these videos better. Also make sure to subscribe. I come out with three of these data-driven videos per week and you're not gonna wanna miss this content going forward. All right, everyone, until next time, this is Nick from ReVenture Consulting signing off. Oh.